Obidos is a medieval village in Portugal, and it really felt like a little toy village where everything is color-coordinated. They really like their blue stripes here. I'm wondering if originally this village had a bunch of yellow stripes, and then there was some city council meeting where <laughs> everybody decided, let's paint them all blue. The blue paint seemed newer than the yellow paint. I think what's funny is that even the graffiti is blue. Like, told the graffiti people, like, okay, if you do make graffiti, it has to be blue. Why did you do this watercolor sandwich technique where it's like watercolor and, and then watercolor? I think watercolor functions so well as an under sketch. It's forgiving. It's very light. And even if you go out of the lines, the nature of watercolor is hard to control. So people kind of understand when they see that that it can function as an undersketch and not ruin the quality of the image. I don't usually like to paint these panoramic scenes. I feel like they usually look really flat, and yet you picked this anyway, even though you sort of agree with me. I did this because for of two reasons. First is that I knew Obidush was not a truly huge tourist location. So I knew I could sit somewhere, take in the view, and know that nobody would distract me. And the second reason is that I don't do it normally. I don't really like doing it because maybe there are too many people around and generally I don't like to do landscapes. So there are all these reasons. But I knew I needed to have variety in my plein air drawings. And Obidush was the perfect location for it because of how less touristy it was. When you're painting plain air, I feel like you have to really carefully choose your supplies from a practical point of view. Drawing in plain air, you have to do a lot of preparation beforehand. I don't know, you can just take random supplies with you and then learn for the next time, <laughs> right? <laughs> you won't know it until you try it. <laughs> and so what kind of pen are you using? Here I'm using a micron pen. Just because they're convenient, I like the line width, and there's no way I can bring a dip pen and nib plan air drawing. I mean, I could, but that's just so much of a hassle. I don't want to do it. I don't want to work. You're lazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So in the pen part, how are you picking what to outline? Because there's a billion textures and lines, but it seems like you do have a strategy for what to outline. I try to get a big shape. Any big shape I see, I outline, such as the roofs, or if any of the buildings are substantial or close to me. Other places, I just need to give an indication of texture. I don't have to draw every single line. If I drew every single line in the tiles of the roofs, I think that would have been incredibly distracting to my composition. So sometimes I just give an indication. These buildings have atmospheric perspective. And what that is, is that there's a foreground, middle ground, and background. And the general rule is that anything closer to you, foreground, would be clearer and darker in color. And as you go back into space, things get more fuzzy, less detailed, and also paler in color. Another thing I really liked about it was how everything was sloped. Nothing was a true straight line because of how old it was and how it was situated on a hill. There was no straight edges or straight lines anywhere. Everything was just a little bit curved. Gets you off the hook for linear perspective. <laughs> Isn't that convenient? I honestly think that makes it harder because everything still follows perspective. But when the line is a little wonky, it's harder to measure. Maybe it's because you don't have any frame of reference. Like there's no horizon line that you can refer back to. There are so many buildings crisscrossing here and there. They're somehow not in perspective. The landscape looks wonky, like unintentionally so. There is a line between wonky on purpose and wonky without purpose. <laughs> Wait, so you didn't do linear perspective or you did? I'm so confused. Well, you still have to do linear perspective for each of the buildings. Like if you see the building on the bottom left, that's certainly following a certain vanishing point, right? And then to the right, the huge house right next to it, look at how many surfaces the roof has. But there are some edges that still follow perspective. They're not straight. They're a little bit wonky, but they still follow a direction. So basically you're saying there's 30 vanishing points in this landscape. Correct. <laughs> when you got out the water brush for the watercolors, you were like scrubbing them into the palette. Like how come you're so aggressive with the watercolor cakes? I think it's just the nature of the medium. When you have a micron pen, you can't help but want to draw all the little details, take your time and not squish the little tip. You got to be careful not to destroy those. They're quite fragile. But then with the watercolor kit, I mean, it's a 
cake watercolor palette, I have to scrub it to get the color out. And also when I'm coloring it in into my drawing, well, I don't want to follow all the lines because I don't think watercolor looks good when it's super photo precise. Cakes are easier to clean. I like how they just snap into a box and all I have to do is add water and scrub to get color. So how do you know that you're done? Or maybe it isn't, you just ran out of time and we're hot and sunburned. Either you feel like it's done or you're fed up and you want it to be done. And in this case, I think I was just fed up. I'm cold. It's windy. I'm high up. I want to get down. So I just finished up. I feel like once my butt starts to hurt, that's pretty much a signal that I got to start wrapping it up. Color wise, what are you thinking going into the second layer of watercolor? I'm thinking of putting down the real colors I see, such as the red roofs and the green grass and the trees. But I'm also thinking of blocking in shadow. So I have blue for the shadows and that's pretty much it. I didn't really add much light. Any light I had, I just left it more blank or I added some like light wash of yellow. But you have the cast shadows from the chimney. Those are blue. Oh, yeah. 